Hey there, Alistair here, finally back in the workshop after my surgery to fix my diverticulitis problem. Uh, it's been, what's it been now, eight, nine weeks now since I actually had the surgery and uh, I honestly thought I'd be back up and running in sort of two, three weeks, I know four weeks at max, but yeah, I think I was kidding myself that I was gonna fix I was gonna get fixed that quick. But it's been a bit of a long, long road to be honest in the recovery. And uh I think the older you get, the slower your body recovers. And plus you have, you have to listen to your body as well. I I'm I'm not one for sitting around doing nothing. So for me to just sit around doing nothing obviously means that my body's not ready to to get back to it so I kind of listened to it and that's why it's taken eight or nine weeks for me to get back to this point but uh, this this week I'm actually this is the first week I've actually felt really good felt a lot of energy back to back to how I used to be I think because I've been living with the diverticulitis or diverticular diverticulitis is when it actually gets infected I think it's diverticular when you're just living with it I think because I was living with it for so long I didn't realise how much it dragged me down and how much it was affecting just the way I felt. So, yeah, I'm glad that it's all behind me now, all fixed up and raring to go back to making some knives. Uh, I haven't been going crazy this last week. I've just been in a bit of a slow build up. Plus, it's like, I think it's yesterday it was 39 degrees in Perth here. So it's like over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty cooking hot. I did actually have to put the aircon on unit aircon unit on yesterday because it was it was really really getting hot. So I've got it turned off now, so you can hear me. I'll put it back on again once I've finished recording this. But I'm not going to edit this video. Um, I haven't really got time to sort of do a, an edit and make it this and so. As it comes is as it comes. So I hope yeah, hope it all comes out good. Anyway, I've been up to a few knives. I've been uh, making uh, on the Bushwood range. This is the Bushwood curve back. I made a couple of uh, these. These have been heat treated and tempered. Um, this one has got slightly shorter blade to it. So if I put them together, you can probably see that the blade is just a little bit shorter on there. It's just got taken that point off. A bit of a more curve to the belly there because this one is an order for a guy and he wants more of a hunting all-purpose knife so slightly shorter blade for skinning so you can get your finger sort of to the point and probably go with a full flat grind on this one so nice thin knife thin um you know what i mean <laughs> thinner thinner than the than the usual scandy which is got a bit more you know a bit, bit more meat to the actual blade part of itself this one will be the standard scandy grind this one will be the full flat grind so that is those two and i have been on this chef's knife uh, which i'm working on it's got around a 200 mil long ish blade so if you're working in inches around eight eight and a bit inches long overall it's probably about three three twenty three forty 340 long so it's got quite a good um nice handle to it and i think the i think it's a friend of mine and he likes uh eating lots of meat and car he must have like barbecues and stuff like that and carving big chunks of meat so that's what he's asked for so this is in 12c 27 stainless steel and i haven't actually used this before so it'd be quite good to get some feedback from him as in like edge, reten edge retention and just performance be good just to, to see how it how it goes uh i've been on a few wallets in some leather work because while i was off obviously i did fiddle around when i felt like it a little bit but i didn't want to do loads of heavy kind of stand at the grinder and banging and whatever so i sort of uh, got into making a few wallets now i made this mold up this has got some G10 on there, stacked up a few uh, bits of G10, rounded the edges off, and then uh, just made this top piece. So basically what you do, you wet your leather, so soak it for five, 10 minutes. And uh, I'm using, I think it's 2.5 to three mil thick leather. Lay it onto the mold. So imagine that's wet, that goes onto the mold and then that piece on top and you just clamp it down with some g clamps all the way around 
and then let it dry. And then once it's dry, you get that. It's got that nice 3D kind of look to it there. And it's nice and hard. So it should hold its shape. So I'm on that. Uh, and that's around about it, to be honest. I think with as in, oh, I've got one, one other, one other one I'm working on, my little Brumbies. Uh, so this one's had uh, heat treat, double temper, and had the flats hand sanded to 600 grit. And got my little logo, where is it on that side? So we can put, etch the logo on there. So this one will probably either have like a sabre grind to it. So the grind will come up probably halfway up there. Uh, 3.2 mil AEBL. Um, so that'd be a nice little knife when it's all done. Uh, I think that, that's around about it for things that I've got on go in the workshop at the moment. One other thing I was gonna just say about was this. I picked this up the other day. I've been dyeing leathers and i've been using just your usual little lamb's wool to spread the, the, the dye on but in this heat and especially with the lighter shades of the dye i was tending to get streaks forming and you end up having to like saturate the whole thing to, to just to lose the streaks and then that kind of defeats the object of using the lighter dye because you're putting so much on there that you're losing the actual color of the leather underneath so so that's what I've used for this and it's really transformed to be honest the way uh, it goes on because you can spray on a nice because that that this canister pressurizes that if you can see there you go there it goes so it pressurizes the glass container and works just like your normal rattle can aerosol but you can get a nice nice la even layer of the dye on the leather just in one application so you're not darkening it up too much and you're actually getting the true shade of the of the dye on your leather which is exactly what i was after more of a natural look rather than the real kind of dark uh one other, one other little thing i've had using one of these in one of the videos i can't remember which one it was it must be one of the real early videos that i did i think i was is it on a video or was it on instagram anyway it was one or the other had a few messages saying what was the little gadget I was using to just melt the ends of the thread over. And it's just this little thing, it's called a, uh, is that the right way? No, that's the right way. Hot Devil. And it's a refillable, you put your little refill thing in the air, upside down, refill it up. But it's what just like a little light, if you can see that, just lights up on its own, just press the button and you don't have to actually turn any knobs or, um, yeah, it's just really basic go, just press the button and away you go. And you can adjust the flame down on the thing on the side there, so that's down, that's high. But really good for just melting that, very precise, just melting the, the thread when you're, when you're doing your, your side. Uh, stitching on your leather sheets but it has to be the nylon thread it doesn't really work on the cotton threads because obviously they just catch fire and burn but yeah so that's a really good little tool uh i can't remember how much it was it's like next to nothing they normally have them all stacked up at the checkout when you're at places and i just thought oh, i'll grab one of those and it's been so good um i think that is about it for knife work knife bits and pieces just want to say a big thanks to all the messages that i've had for uh people saying get well and i think so i think i put it on my instagram saying that i hadn't been in the workshop for a while and this and that and I had a few messages of people saying oh you haven't put a video up for a while is everything okay and which is which is like fantastic that people take the time out of their day to just write a little note or a message saying hope everything's okay uh, and when people have heard that I've had the surgery hope that you're recovering okay and everything went okay with the surgery it's just so nice to, to know that people out there care and if there was more care in the world I think the world would definitely be a better place but unfortunately some people don't don't care I, you know I, I care about lots of things and lots of people and this and that and that's just the way I am but uh, 
yeah, once again, a big thank you to everybody that sent me the messages. I really do appreciate it. I love reading them. And um, oh, it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel, you know, that what you're doing is is appreciated by people. And and uh, and it's good. To, some of them are from all over the world. Like, you know, USA. I'm in here in Perth and USA. And there's you know, Canada and UK, Ireland. It's just like, fantastic little messages coming from all over the world, which is just like blows my mind which is i love it um so i think that's around about it uh, i will get back to putting some more uh, knife progress videos or other you know things that come up in the knife building process and i think it's worth putting on a video i will be doing some of that i think i'll do a video on stabilizing i've had quite a few questions about stabilizing wood i've actually while i was off i was doing quite a lot of stabilizing because that you can just chuck it in the pressure pot no, vacuum tank, sorry, not pressure pot. Throw them in the pre in. Oh, I said it again. In the vacuum tank, throw them in the vacuum tank and crank the the pump up every uh, few hours, and good to go. It does its own thing. So I have actually been doing a bit of uh, stabilising while I was off. So that's what that's one bonus anyway. So I've got quite a nice stock of, of stabilised handle materials, which will look cool on some knives. So if anyone wants a knife, go on to my website campagnaknives.com.au and have a look on there at some of the styles that I do and also I, I, I do actually make if someone's got a, a specific request and you can send me some pictures of the sort of thing you're after then I can make like uh, custom orders um, I prefer doing the knives that I actually um, the range of knives that I actually make because it just makes sense with everything that I do and um, you know I know what I'm doing with those and I can just kind of crack on and get get to work and, and and build them but i will i do actually make custom knives as well so if anyone's interested in anything let me know once again thank you very very much for all the good wishes and i really do appreciate it and good to get back to it plenty of work to be done and i shall see you on the next video and stay safe i shall see you soon cheers bye bye